the one. Um, this question is from Owen, Owen Gwynn. What are the main areas of policy that are better coordinated at an EU level rather than at national level? Yeah. Can we take the first answer, please, from Change UK, please? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I can project, but that's pushing it a bit. Um, okay, so I think um, it's fair to say that... Um, Common fisheries is a prime example of where we have to have multinational cooperation. I thought, I thought you were sort of trying to show me up there. Um, so, for instance, common fisheries. There are communities that have been very vocal about uh, they want to have total control over the fishing communities of this and the, the, the fisheries of this of the of the, of the of the of the UK and the surrounding waters. But we also have to be realistic about the fact that fishing levels were totally depleted. No, and the EU has helped recover them and make sustainable communities. That's one obvious example. Tax avoidance. We know that we're not going to be able to deal with tax avoidance as one individual nation. We have to deal with it by pooling our sovereignty across the whole of the continent and say loud and clear that if you want to trade here, you have to play by the rules here. I think that's vitally important. And immigration. Immigration is one that we also have to collaborate on. We have huge, huge benefits that immigration brings. But we also have to think about other areas where people are leaving and how do we support communities that are changing and are being absent of people. That creates huge problems for placemaking, it creates huge problems for a future of the economy in that area. And I think these are just three obvious areas where we need EU collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, the two things that immediately come to mind are trade and the environment. Um, environmental effects, they don't stop at borders. There's no way to deal with them entirely on a national basis. You've got to make sure that you've got um, cooperative decision-making structures in place that are effective. Now, the only way you can properly have those is, ideally, if we didn't have the European Union today on, a, on an environmental basis, you would be inventing it because there's no way of dealing with those challenges otherwise. And then when it comes to trade, now this is one of the things that keeps coming up in the uh, Brexit argument, that the UK will be far better off on a trade basis if it is outside of the European Union. Uh, you know, as somebody who's been actively engaged in dealing with trade issues for the last 15 years, I can tell you that is arrant nonsense. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever as soon as it is examined. So we are collectively stronger in terms of negotiations when we are negotiating as a European Union in trade issues than if we are wanting to do it individually on our own. Right, I'll pass the third answer to Jessica from the Green Party. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I agree with my colleagues on the, on the different that there are many, many policies which have a much greater advantage to be looked at at the European level. But I just want to bring us to agriculture because the common agricultural policy now is fundamental for us to work together. If we don't look after our land, if we don't look after our soils, if we don't look after our animals, then we are in a very, very bad place. And in the context of a warming climate, we absolutely have to work together at the European level to transform the common agricultural policy because right now it's not working. And it can work. This could be absolutely a motor for turning things around, for tackling climate change for ensuring that our soils will allow us to continue to have food well beyond our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children, which currently is, there seems to be absolutely no guarantee. So these kind of policies, agriculture, fishery, energy, all of the policies which are cross-border, we have a, an advantage for dealing with them at the European level. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, the, uh, where are we? We've got the fourth answer from the Labour Party, from Julie. Uh, well, I'd like to talk a little bit about refugee and asylum policy, and that hasn't been going very well um, in the EU. And one of the things that we need to do is to reform the Dublin regulation, which is not fit for purpose. And I'm very proud that a colleague in the Socialists and Democrats group, Ellie Schlein, has been working on that in the current legislature, and we need to return to that. Um, and we need to share our, we need to share the responsibility. 
of refugees in this country. And what has been happening in the UK has been absolutely shameful. I'm really proud that I gave evidence to the House of Lords um, about unaccompanied minors. I'm a child rights campaigner. Uh, and you know, our record on welcoming refugees and giving safety to um, people fleeing uh, war and unsustainable lives has been totally shocking. Just to talk a little bit more about children, I'm a, I am a child rights campaigner. I established a child rights intergroup in the European Parliament, the first time it had ever happened. I've just spent two days at a conference uh, at the BBC with the Children's Commissioner um, uh, and we were talking with European children's ombudsman about safety of children online. And the online space is another really important area where Europe has to lead. We cannot kowtow to the giants in Silicon Valley. So it's very important that we take safety and security seriously. Thank you. Can you pass the mic to me? Um, sorry. Uh, right, fifth answer from Chris from Lib Dems. Thank you. My name, thank you very much. Um, I gave six examples of areas where the EU should be taking a lead to when I first spoke. So I just want to concentrate on another one, the one that Ian raised, and I'm really grateful for that, which is on fisheries, because I do get fed up of Nigel Farage dressing himself up in, um, on, on, on boats and proclaiming to be the great hero of fishermen. I mean, fish, the great thing about fish is they don't pay any respect to national boundaries. And he doesn't seem to realise that. I feel passionate about this, partly because I'm the only MEP ever to have dressed up as a fish in the European Parliament <laughs> on, on many occasions. I've been a mermaid. A mermaid? Well, yeah. okay. I didn't come across you. Um, we, I, I passed an overlap. I, I, I formed a cross-party cross -party group within the Parliament. We do that lots, cross-party mm -hmm. groups, working across nationalities, across the parties, to try and strengthen the, the reforms of the common fisheries policy and introduce sustainability principles into it. Um, we did, we, we succeeded, we got a big strong vote from the Parliament, the CFP was radically reformed in 2013, many improvements have been carried out, many have not yet, above all the core sustainability principles, have not yet been met, largely because national governments are not doing what the law, European law now says they must do, which is follow the scientific advice when they set quotas each year. If we want a future you know, for our seas, if we want a future for protein for, to feed our people, if we want more biodiversity in our oceans, we need to ensure there are fish for the future. All right, last answer is from Sophie from um, UK EU. Thank you. Thank you. So, answering to this question, the main area policies as an EU state member would be first the free movement of people. Let's say, for example, students, they can learn another language, they can study in another country, they can show their bridge skills to the other European state members. Trade as well. Trade is very important because tariffs on imports are equal for any European state member. Uh, the borders due to the 2015 Syrian uh, refugee uh, wave, cooperation and security must be, all the countries must cooperate together in order to save their country and put up some borders. And uh, I read yesterday that some country, they can launch on their own initiative. Let's say, um, I read that six countries are ready to say, to campaign that a quarter of the budget would be assigned to reduce um, uh, carbon emission by 2020. So it shows that the initiative of one country or a few countries, they gathered and they can tell to the European uh, other countries, we are ready to do this, follow our example. So that's an example of cooperation, I think. Mm. Yeah.